This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is playoff time in the NFL, and that means we got only a couple more chances to snag futures for this 2023 NFL season. We're going to do that today by talking to Ryan Williams, picking his brain on his favorite futures entering the postseason and trying to find where there is value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as I am every Tuesday by Ryan. Ryan Williams, checking out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W Ryan. The Bucks futures came to fruition. The Texans futures came to fruition. This has been a very profitable show, uh, at least for me, based on our discussions. And selfishly, I'll take that. So nothing else required here. How are you doing today? I'm doing better now that I'm off mute, Jim. Uh, that's a fun <laughs> way to start uh, the playoff show, you know, uh, regular season, a uh, little audio issues, and then started off in the in the playoffs with uh, mute. But no, uh, we're, we're good this weekend, man. It, it's been a fun year. Um, and we got a couple more weeks to be able to, you know, help out the covering the spread community. So we're excited to be able to do so. I think we have some fun matchups on tap for yeah. Super Wild Card Weekend or whatever they're calling it this year. Uh, three day, three days of football, right? Um, with the two three one, two three one, yeah, two three one format. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to talk about uh, some more ways that we can uh, rake in rake in some dough uh, for for ourselves and for for the people. Do you have a favorite matchup this weekend that you're looking forward to most? Um, you know, I. <laughs> As funny as it sounds, I, I am excited for the Miami uh, yeah. Chiefs game uh, yeah. that's on Peacock exclusively outside of the Miami and Kansas City markets. What a joke. Um, do you have Peacock think, or do you have to scramble to get it now? Well, I, I'm going to hit up my my uh, brother and sister-in-law. Oh, the, the classic Peacock streaming account. streaming channel move. I like it. E exactly. Exactly. Peacock hasn't done anything about that like Netflix has with uh, household sharing. So, uh, yeah, I, I had no idea about that until researching uh, the slate. And I was like, yeah. wait, what 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 is this even? Um, that's unbelievable that it's not a nationally televised game but of, all, of all games. Like that's yeah. the one that you're going to choose to put on Peacock. Unbelievable. So Swifty's yeah. got to Swifty's got to fork <laughs> up the money. Um, shout out to Roger Goodell. Uh, so that one's interesting. And then I think, you know, the other one that really stands out to me too, is the, is the last game uh, is yep. the Buccaneers hosting it's the compelling. Eagles. The yeah. Buccaneers hosting the Eagles. I, I, I mean, we talked about them winning the division for so many weeks here, so yeah. I can't really sound surprised because we've been banging the drum for so long. But it is surprising to know that that is a Tampa Bay hosted playoff game. Um, it's weird with, yeah. with the Eagles. Like I, I mean, the Eagles not winning the 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 East is one thing, but then having to play the Tampa team, which like you know, this will be tough for Sirianni. You know, I I really yeah. feel like. Things are the tables are starting to turn on him. The tide's starting to turn. Like, you know, AJ Brown's not happy yet again. Um, you know, we saw this narrative already once this season. Uh, he's banged up. Devonta's banged up. Jalen just hasn't looked right. And you know, this is a very opportunistic team. So I, I'm curious to see how that how that game plays out. Only a two and a half spread. Yeah, I I did take the Bucks, so uh, I'm curious to see how it plays <laughs> out too. Did I feel good about that, Ryan? No, but here we are because the Bucks have been good to us this year. Let's see if they can do it one more time. We're gonna talk about some futures that Ryan is digging as we get set for the playoffs for this year, outlining some potential long shots to win their respective conferences, whether or not there's actually viability in those teams, and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast we still have our full complement of shows with it being in the nfl playoffs still here every monday through friday tomorrow nba nhl via tom vecchio 
our full wild card weekend preview with Dr. Ed Fang coming up on Thursday. And of course, player props with JJ Zacharyson coming your way on Friday. To get those shows, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find us on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. The NFL playoffs are here, and now is the time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that's 150 bucks in bonus bets win or lose the app is so easy to use and there are so many ways to bet like live same game parlays you can find bets in the new explore tab make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays and more so visit fanduel and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-428-ARIZONA, 888 789 over the ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 within Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-gambler.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text Next open Y in New York. Now let's begin things, Ryan, by talking about the AFC side of things and talking about the Texans because you were on them to win in the AFC South, and I got a ticket as a result of that. So A, thank you. B, they <laughs> not made the playoffs, but they now get a home playoff game against the Browns. Any consideration for you in betting them 25 to 1 to win the AFC, or is that too big of a leap of faith in year one of D'Amico Ryans and CJ Stroud? It's, it's a pretty big leap of faith, Jim. Like, I mean, the storyline is so good. I'm so happy for this team that they made it in. You, you know, just thinking about where they were a, a year ago, like Lovey losing or winning, yeah. Lovey winning the game in week 18 so that they get the number two pick when they could have had the one pick um, and still being able to, you know, right the ship in that, in that fashion, you know, with, with D'Amico Ryans, with C taking a chance on C.J. Stroud here, um, and and then trading back up to get Will Anderson, um, which was you know talked about as like not really a great move um, yeah. at the time, and and when you see it, like they got the offensive rookie of the year on offense and probably the defensive player of the year, um, so it's it's absolutely incredible. A defensive rookie of the year, I should say, not player, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you're still looking at. You know, teams like Buffalo, who's been there before, Baltimore, who's been there before, Kansas City, who's been there before. Um, I, I love CJ Stroud. I think the future is very bright for him. Um, at 25 to 1, you know, I still think they're very young. I mean, that game against Indy, you know, there were still some strings being pulled yeah. along the way that kind of helped them, you know, get in there. I mean, a fourth down conversion that, you know, Jonathan Taylor catches probably 10 out of 10 times, right. you know, in his sleep. Um, that could really have this game you know, or really have the situation thrown on its head. So it makes me a little bit weary. Um, that is such a great number to get them. I think the last, if I'm not mistaken, the last rookie to play in the Super Bowl was Dan Marino. Um, so I think that we have, you know, a, a long way to go there. Uh, mm -hmm. Or it's been a long time since that's happened. But, uh, you know, they, listen, he's the real deal. I wish that the, I wish that the team was a little bit more healthy. You know, if he had Tank Dell still, if he had, you know, had, you know, these wide receivers that were like not no names that he's throwing to the other, the other day, um, that would make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more interesting, but I am interested in getting the two and a half, uh, from them against Cleveland, uh, this year, the covering the spread community knows that I have not bought into Cleveland uh, for quite some time. And I guess I'm, I'm going to be back in the well. So Joe Flacco and company might make me eat crow yet again, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to ride with the Texans week to week, um, and just see how that plays out. 
Yep, I am with the with you on the week to week part, and I agree that it's a bit tough to justify getting them to the AFC Championship. It's not just because the the youth on uh, the inexperience on this team, but also defense definitely not a strength, uh, and that's going to matter yeah. when you're facing teams like uh, the Chiefs, the the Ravens, who do have legitimately very good defense, the Browns as well, and. I also just wish they had the ability to run the football a bit. Like it's not the most important factor, but like they're really, really bad in that arena. So week to week. Yeah, I'm fine betting them. As we talked about in yesterday's show, they were uh, one of my favorite bets this week is the Texans plus two and a half with a bit on the money line as well. But I think that 25 to one still not quite long enough to draw me in when it comes to winning the AFC as a conference as a whole. Let's slip and talk about the NFC now because Eagles and their slide continued. And you talked about the bad vibes, you know, with AJ Brown, the whole team kind of weird. There are now like people on Reddit calling for Nick Sirianni's job. It's it ain't great, man. It's it's a very weird situation <laughs> compared to where we were like a month and a half ago. But the yeah. Eagles still have better odds to win the conference at plus 750 than the Lions at plus 950. So any value in either of those teams to you behind the top tier of San Francisco and Dallas? Yeah, I'm actually surprised about the the Lions. You know, I I think that they, you know, it seemed like the sportsbooks have been getting them a lot of a lot of credit. You know, earlier on in the season, and now you know, as of late, like you know, we talked about them 22 to one last week uh, to win the Super Bowl. Um, you know, the 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 conference odds like Philly's been reeling enough where I feel like this there should be a gap. Like it should be probably 850 to 950, not 750 to 950 yeah. here. Um, and you know, listen, Detroit is going to have, they, they have, if I'm Dan Campbell, I'm telling the team, like we have everything going in our favor because nobody effing believes in us. Like, and, and to just go into the playoffs, like knowing that, that you're just yeah. playing with house money with a team that's actually pretty explosive. And, yeah. you know, we talked about it, like, you know, being able to host some games at home in the dome for golf and the Super Bowls in the dome, like. You know, maybe maybe the Lions are just the team of destiny. And like the thing again, we just talked about it with Houston. You brought it up. But like the one thing that concerns me here is the defense. Like the defense yeah. just gives up so much production. Um, it, it's it's so frustrating. Like Aaron Glenn's, you know, philosophy has really just been don't break to the utmost capacity. Um, and they tend to end up breaking like once yeah. they get into the red zone. Um, so you know, that's that's the one caveat there. And we'll it, I think it's tough sledding, you know, either way for them to play San Fran or Philly. But, you know, if if Philly's able to get knocked out early, you know, and they only have to look at San Fran, then I think that's a fun matchup. Like, oh, yeah. it, it really is. Um, and so I, I'm I'm on board with uh, with being able to, to, to take a chance there. Um, I do think, you know, as crazy as it sounds and we kind of talked I talked about this team a lot at the beginning of the season and I kind of wrote it off because I knew my tickets were dead. But like. The Rams coming into their own yeah. is is really interesting. Like, you know, this is why they traded for Matthew Stafford. Like, Matthew Stafford's got the offense kind of humming right now. Kyron Williams has been great. Like, the defense has been playing a lot better. And they're 21-1 to to win the NFC. Like, I mean, they, they've been here. Like, McVay, McVay was thought to have retired this year, Jim. Like, yeah. he, he, you know, these these players, might these people might have come back for a reason. And so, you know, this team being on a mission, I do think the NFC is is wide open, you know, outside of San Fran, who looks like the, the best team. But we did, you know, see Christian McCaffrey, you know, dealing with something before we entered Week 18. So we want to see that he's healthy. And, you know, we want to see that Brock Purdy can – can can write the ship but you know these these are the times that we want to take chances you know on, on teams as we get into the wild card and, and things get interesting for sure because these are going to be the best numbers we get all postseason and we get to see those lions and those rams face off against each other this weekend in detroit a homecoming for matthew stafford yeah. revenge game for jared goff uh and brad holmes the gm of the lions there's a lot of revengeiness in that yeah. game and it's going to be a fun one for sure. The Lions also some good injury news to them yesterday. Uh, Sam Laporta apparently has an outside shot to play in that game, which means were they to win, it does sound like there's a decent shot that Laporta can go in the second round at least, but they have to beat the Rams obviously to get there. And then also Jamison Williams seems like he'll be good to go for this game against the Rams. So two good injury notes for the Lions yesterday. I... Don't think I'll wind up on either side of this game as far as a, the spread goes. Um, interest in the under if it gets a little bit higher, if it gets to a little bit above where it is right now. But 
honestly, I think I'm just going to enjoy that game and not be rooting for either team because it looks like a true delight across the board. Now, a bit lower in the NFC, Ryan. And like, you know, I know this is an NFC North foe for the Bears, so I don't want to make you speak positively about the Packers, but they're 39 to (laughs) 1 to win the NFC. Jordan Love has been awesome this year. They're a very, very young team, but they're also underdogs to even win one game in the postseason. So do the Packers intrigue you at all from a futures perspective, or do you think they're a good story having advanced here and then nothing further beyond that? No, I mean, it, a little bit of both, I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's just crazy to think that the youngest team, you know, the youngest team to make the playoffs in NFL history, you know, is, is this team and and what, what it all meant and how it was looking, you know, for them very bleak, you know, when they lose to Tommy DeVito on Monday yeah. Night Football. Um, a couple of weeks ago and, and the playoff, you know, picture was not looking in, in their favor and they go, they go out and they do what they need to do and handle business. And, you know, respect to Jordan Love, who, you know, wasn't getting the respect that, that he deserved and, you know, to come in here and, and fill in the void, you know, for, uh, for Aaron Rodgers, you know, and the legacy quarterbacks that have been the Green Bay Packers, like it's, it's pretty you know, it, it, it's it's pretty exciting for, you know, to see a guy like that be able to s- sit and wait his turn and then, you know, lead, lead his team. Um, I think, you know, they he definitely believes in himself. I think oh, he's yeah. got the confidence in the floor now. Um, if he hasn't before, like that hug after the after the game to see him, you know, embrace as they get into the playoffs like that should seal it. So um, it's it's going to again, it comes down to defense like their their defense has been they have the talent. Um, we, you know, you want to see Jair, you know, coming back and, and ready to play and, and some of the other guys on the front lines who have, who have been out. Um, I think that they, you know, they, they have, it's, it's just so funny to me that they get the Cowboys in this first matchup because yeah. like, this is the complete and utter letdown spot for the Dallas Cowboys, like at home, it, everything's been, you know, they have the Jimmy Johnson thing going on this year. Like, it seems like everything's shaping up in their favor and this will be a, a, a game that they they end up losing like i just i i just know it i will i will probably not bet it um but if you if you want to take a shot like at three to one i think they're the second you know uh second highest odds um to be able to win their matchup at three to one on the road there i mean definitely the spread has me interested for sure at seven and a half there um as most of the cowboys playoff games as as of uh, recent memory have been you know closer than that so um yeah, I, I think the Green Bay Packers, you know, if you want to take a chance on him, you're a chance on them. This is the time they go in yeah. there and they beat Dallas like you are not getting anywhere near uh, that number uh, for them again. So, you know, just if you're if you're one of those people that just likes to dabble on, you know, some futures and long shots that are just like, what the heck? then this that's an opportunity to uh, to be able to rake in. Yeah, that spread this weekend, seven and a half uh, for Dallas over Green Bay. The seven and a half is minus 118 on the Packers side of things. But I'm with you, Ryan. I actually did take that personally. Uh, And we're two for two, I think, because you said you like the Texans this week and you like the Packers. Those are both uh, recommendations from yesterday on the show. So feeling better about recommendations for this week, (laughs) at least based on your feedback here so hopefully we can go a full clean sweep across the board but i agree the packers this weekend specifically getting the seven and a half given how efficient jordan love has been given the fact that the cowboys defense has been a bit leaky at times has got some injuries stefan gilmore i think should be good to go but left uh, a little bit banged up uh, a couple weeks ago too so like there's some injuries there. I think there's enough to at least justify betting the Packers plus seven and a half, maybe not 39 to one, but you know, I think there's enough there to be optimistic, especially with Aaron Jones looking really, really good right now for this offense. Any other futures you want to stack before we get this postseason underway, Ryan? Yeah, I've been looking. I mean, I've been saying this so long. So the chiefs at, at 10 to one, right. So yep. to win the super bowl, they're, they're, Plus four ninety to win the AFC. So mm-hmm. uh, how can you how can you tell me that they're ten to they're ten to one to win the Super Bowl, but they're under five to one to win the AFC? Like if they get to the Super Bowl, like w- what are we doing here? Like it should not be double. Um, you know, I, they they get Miami. I think that's probably one of the best matchups that they could 
you know, potentially have drawn um, mm-hmm. for their first, you know, home matchup here is they'll have to go on the road, you know, pr- pretty shortly after that. Um, I'm, I'm willing to take a chance. I mean, it's still Mahomes. It's still Andy Reid. I've been say- saying that all day. Like, if they end up figuring it out, if they end up, you know, g- getting, you know, getting the offense figured out, because the defense, you said it, like the defense has been playing great. And that's the main thing that, like, I think about when I'm thinking about taking playoff teams and taking, you know, teams to win is like, it, is the defense going to come to play because that's what ends up needing to happen um, for these teams to get far. It's usually, you know, a defense that's been reeling in the regular season that ends up putting it together, or it's a defense that's been set on a year that ends up still showing up. And so if this offense can just keep pack, uh, which is, uh, yeah, uh, pun intended, I guess, keep pack. Um, then I think there's some opportunity there. And like, like I said, you know, we're not, we're not going to get numbers like these as we go further in. So um, I think that's, you know, interesting. We got so many narratives, you know, we got the, the Deshaun Watson, even though he'll be on the bench, like return to Houston, we got oh, yeah. uh, Tyreek Hill return to Kansas city. You already mentioned the Matthew Stafford return to Detroit. So fun weekend ahead, but yeah, I think chiefs futures uh, definitely catch my eye. There is a wild card special. If you go to the tabs there uh, with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey to combine for 20 receptions, which is, <sighs> under four to one which is just absolutely hilarious but i do feel this absolutely has to be a game where travis kelsey gets going i mean there's no if ands or buts about it they just need to feed him like similar to what we see with cd lamb and tyree kill on the other side for that matter like these guys you just need to get the ball in his hands and and let's not you know make a mistake about that so um definitely like that i think um if there's Another one that's interesting in the wildcard specials, it's an offense alignment uh, to score a touchdown at 22 to one. You know, like we got some, we got Andy Reid on this slate. Like we got the Lions who have been, you know, rolling out offense alignment out the, there. The Lions are like trolling with Skipper at this point. Like they, they're, they really they're, are. they're leaning into it. <laughs> Yeah, and so we got twenty-two to one on that. Uh, any offense alignment to score in the six games that we have, uh, which I think is really fun. And then Deron Bland, and you know, I think that this is one of those that's like a super long shot, but I think it's it's so fun to get action on because this yeah. guy was so incredible this year at getting pick sixes. And in you know, in this matchup at home uh, with the crowd reeling, like he's forty-five to one to take one back to the house. He's been an absolute like magnet to the football. Um, so I think that's a fun one to, to get action on as well, too. Um, I probably will write about this this week. I haven't dove into the market too much, but the playoff specials tab is just so fun, you know, to get action on it. If you have a, if you have a good read or if you, if you are betting on, you know, some of these long shots to like make the playoffs or I'm sorry, to, to make the Super Bowl or conference championship, you should be getting in on this market because like, you're going to get great numbers, you know, on these guys, you know, down, down the way, you know, let's say the, uh, let's say the Rams end up making it to the MC championship. Matthew Stafford is 18 to one, you know, to yeah. lead in, in playoff passing. Like these, these are, fun. I mean, Jalen hurts is 20 to one. And like, you know, we know, know him as running and scoring the rushing touchdowns, but like they, they got to get the offense involved too, uh, back healthy. So that's an interesting one. I think all of these markets here from passing, rushing, receiving are all fun ones to get on. If you think that, you know, your team is, is going to be, you know, down, uh, you have a long shot and, and they're going to be in the, mix then this is where you want to take advantage of isaiah pacheco is 12 to 1 to lead in rushing yards for the postseason if you yeah. like the chiefs to win at 10 to 1 that's not too bad because he plays this weekend unlike mccaffrey um that's kind of interesting uh, i think right. that it's a pretty good matchup for pacheco this week against the dolphins uh mckinnon on ir right now eligible to return uh i think next week potentially but haven't heard whether he will do so and pacheco's looked really good so I think that's at least worth checking out. Uh, Pacheco 12 to 1 to lead in rushing for the postseason. That is Ryan Williams. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan will be back with us on Monday. We're going to break down that Bucks versus Eagles game. Actually, the second time this year we've done that because I think they played on Monday in week three or so. So Mm. it's our second. We're going to run it back and talk more Eagles versus Bucks once again but ryan enjoy super wild card weekend uh good luck obtaining a peacock password and we'll talk to you once again next week (laughs) Uh, i appreciate that jim thanks so much can't wait to chop it up with you on monday
Looking forward to it. That is Ryan Williams again. Find him on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. We're going to go back through recommendations here from last week on this show. Didn't have time to do yesterday because we had to finalize the national championship stuff uh, from Washington versus Michigan. So let's go back through that now and outline the recommendations here from last week on the show. Let's begin with Ed Feng. You can find him on Twitter at the power rank, find his work at the power Only one bet for Ed last night during the national championship. That was Jalen McMillan to go over 64 and a half receiving yards, which is minus minus one fourteen. McMillan was very involved in this game uh, for uh, Washington. He had six receptions, I believe, the last time that I checked, but the yardage wasn't really there. Touchdown for McMillan for the second consecutive game. Couldn't quite get there as Michigan's defense really did step up to the plates. So um, no win for McMillan, over 64 and a half receiving yards at minus 114, but kudos to the Michigan team because they locked down. They play great. It was fun to see them uh, win the national championship with J.J. McCarthy, John, or, uh, Jim Harbaugh, and all of the players there in Michigan. <laughs> Our guest on, or actually, we also had Ed on Saturday uh, for, we had Ed for NFL as well. Ed had the Lions, minus three and a half, taking on the Vikings. Wasn't fine that the, the Lions would sit there, guys. He said, hey, it, it's, uh, it's Dan Campbell. His mentality is to go out there, win every football game, push to the final whistle, and they did exactly that. So he had the Lions minus three and a half, and they did cover that. They kept their starters in for the entire game. So not just the fact that he had, the pick right, but also the process behind it. The Lions going to go for the win, try to get that two seed potentially. They did exactly that. Couldn't quite get there, uh, but a cover and a win for Ed with the Lions minus three and a half. Other recommendation for Ed was the Saints minus three if Taylor Heineke were to go. Heineke did wind up sitting, so it was Desmond Ritter who started, and he viewed Ritter as an upgrade over Taylor Heineke, and I think that was fair based on the way that Ritter played in that game. He had a back-breaking pick, as he does seemingly every single week, uh, but played well down to downs. Like, from a sex success rate perspective, Ritter played really well. So I think that Ed staying away from the Saints minus three with Ritter starting did make a lot of sense. But the Saints wound up covering uh, by a wide margin, as we saw with the Jamal Williams uh, touchdown late. So uh, no recommendation there officially, because Heineke did wind up uh, sitting. But a one in one week for Ed with the Saints minus three and a half, McMillan uh, going under 64 and a half receiving yards. Our guest on Friday was Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Uh, yardage recommendations for Tom were Dalton Schultz over 43 and a half receiving yards and Chris Olave over 70, 70 and a half receiving yards. Schultz finished with 42. Uh, couldn't quite get there. There was a lot of good closing line value in that number because I think it closed around 76 and a half. There was a lot of incentive uh, stuff that that led to steam for Dalton Schultz, but with the, the Texans fighting for the playoffs didn't you know, funnel him a lot of work and he wound up going under uh, by just a couple of yards. So no hit there for Schultz at 43 and a half receiving yards. Tom had Chris Olave, as mentioned, over 70 and a half receiving yards. Olave only three receptions, but for 56 yards and a touchdown. So the efficiency was there, just not the volume, in part because the Saints got up so big in that game. So couldn't quite get Olave over 70 and a half receiving yards. Tom had a tough beat with Romeo Dobbs, plus 220 for anytime touchdown. Dobbs had a ball in his hands and came to the ground with it, but then lost it when he hit the ground. And it came out, not only did Dobbs drop that touchdown, but also get hurt on the play. So left the rest of the game and did not play. So no additional chances to cash anytime touchdown for Romeo Dobbs. So no win on the plus 220. Got very, very close there. Tom had uh, a long shot on Mike Evans, plus 800 for two touchdowns uh, because he needed that to set the Bucks single season franchise record. Bucks didn't score any touchdowns, but did get the cover. Uh, and they did win the NFC South as a result. So no one there for Mike Evans. Long shots, so you kind of expect that, but uh, no one there on Evans. Final one was another kind of a tough beat for Tom. That was Michael Pittman over six and a half receptions at minus 138. Pittman had three catches on the first drive. Three catches for 21 yards because they don't let him run downfield. But three catches on the first drive and still couldn't quite get to the over of six and a half. So uh, frustrating day there with some couple a couple things working against Tom. We'll get Tom back on the show uh, on, the, on Wednesday. Actually, tomorrow, talk some NBA and NHL, which will be a delight as always. Final uh, final thing to go through for last week was my recommendations and a good week, 4-0 for me, for recommendations here on the show. I had the Texans and Colts under 47.5 and a half at minus 115. No closing line value there as it closed exactly there, but 
Felt pretty good about it the entire week, and that one went under pretty easily. So uh, I think it was 42 total points in that game. So under went there. I had the Bills and Dolphins under 49 and a half minus 110. Uh, it's always bad luck when you have an under in a game that has a punt return touchdown, especially when it's 95 yards. But still got the under there as well. 35 total points scored in that game. So couple no sweat unders. I will definitely take that uh, to finish out the regular season. I had the Bucks minus five and a half minus 110. This was not a no sweat win because they won nine nothing. The, the offense was pretty bad. Baker had a rib injury, then hurt his ankle during the game. It was not fun at all. So not a no sweat win, but a win regardless. The Bucks minus five and a half minus 110. I got awful movement on that one too. And then also got bad movement on the Saints, minus three and a half, minus 110. Uh, that closed at three. Not great, uh, but regardless, easy win. So bad week as far as movement goes. Did get good movement, my favor for the Bills and Dolphins. That closed at 48 or 48 and a half. Uh, but then bad movement for the Bucks, minus five and a half, and the Saints, minus three and a half, but wins regardless. So didn't feel great about things entering Sunday, given that both those numbers moved against me. But hey, we got the wins. We survive in advance and go to the postseason on a winning note with a 4-0 and week. We'll try to see if we run that back again. If you want some thoughts on the wild card weekend, based on what my model is saying, went through that on yesterday's show with our first look podcast. Four different bets that I liked uh, for this weekend. You can find that in the Covering the Spread podcast feed, along with FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. One more thank you to Ryan Williams uh, for swinging by for today. Find him on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan back with us next week on Monday and Tuesday talking Monday Night Football and talking futures entering the divisional round. If you got any questions for me, you can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim Sonis, and you can follow FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Tuesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some NBA and NHL. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 